everybody, it's Amy Astro here and it is a beautiful semi-cloudy day here in Georgia. And today I thought we would go and talk about the things that drive us crazy. And you know what drives me crazy? Is a world full of acronyms. You know, the kids use their acronyms with texting with the LOL and the ROLF and all that stuff. And I'm like, what? Well, I'm picking up on a few of those. But I've noticed that there's acronyms for every phase of your life whether you are at work and you hear PO, which is purchase order for where I work, or if you hear QTC, which is quarter pounder with cheese if you ever worked at McDonald's. Yes, I worked at McDonald's in high school, but that was about 30 plus years ago. Okay, but you've also got location acronyms like uh, CSRA, Central Savannah River Area. And so many acronyms that life just gets confusing and at some point we are going to forget our words y'all we are going to forget them and we are just going to start talking in letters a little bit strange but i can almost see this happening especially with today's generation well astronomy is no different we have acronyms also why because we want to be like everybody else and just talk a bunch of letters so today I'm gonna to go through some of those acronyms with you and simplify them so you know what they are and you can talk like the big kids using your letters So one of those acronyms that drive me crazy because I didn't know what it was for a very long time, but somebody would walk up to me and say, hey, what OTA are you using? And I'm like, uh, OT what? What's, what's OTA? And it's like, well, that is your optical tube assembly. What? Oh hell, why can't we just say telescope, y'all? What telescope are you using today? Why do we gotta say what OTA are you using? So. OTA, optical, optical, oh hell, I already forgot it. Optical tube assembly. In other words, it's your telescope, okay? The next one that comes around a lot and somebody says, hey, are you shooting uh, OSC or are you going mono? Well, mono back when I was a kid, that was a disease that got you in trouble in high school, but OSC. Um, uh, I don't know. Well, it took me a while to figure that one out also. And OSC stands for one shot color. That is your color camera. That is one shot, does it all, like one stop shopping. Okay, now mono, mono stands for basically your black and white images. That's the camera that we like to use with our filter wheels, our CFWs, color filter wheels, which will have you know, three, five, seven filters in it. Your L, R, G, B, oh heck, I'm talking in letters again. Luminance, red, blue, green, okay? Then you have your narrow band filters, which are HA, O3, and S2, which is hydrogen alpha, oxygen, and sulfur. Those are your narrow band filters. Now put them all together, we can make some incredible images. And mono images tend to be my preferred method of going because if I'm gonna spend the time doing it, I wanna get the most out of my images that I possibly can. Then you're gonna find that there's another group of people that say, are you shooting with a CCD or a CMOS? Um, I'm shooting with the camera, y'all. In fact, I just learned I am shooting with a mono camera, all right? Now you got want to know if I'm shooting with a CCD or a CMOS? Well, what's that? Well, we have to get out some notes for this one, okay? You ready? A CCD is a charged coupled device. All right, I'll admit, CCD is just a little bit easier to say. Okay, and a CMOS is a complementary metal oxide semiconductor. Really? Can we overcomplicate this anymore? All right, let's tell you the difference between a CCD and a CMOS camera, okay? All right, so a CCD uses a global shutter, unlike a CMOS that uses a rolling shutter, all right? I just threw two more confusing words at you. 
global shutter versus rolling shutter. All right, global shutter. Think of about it in your film days. When you ex ex exposed a piece of film or a slide and you expose it to light, it's getting all of the light in one shot, okay? Nice and even, and the more light, the brighter it gets, okay? That is what a global shutter does for you. And that is what a CCD is. It's a global shutter. In general, they're very expensive, okay? High quality, expensive. Now, a CMOS uses a rolling shutter. And that's where it will literally take your images one pixel at a time, starting at the top, going back and forth, until it gets down to the bottom image. Now, it sounds like it takes a really long time, but actually a CMOS camera is much faster than a CCD camera. But another way to think about your CMOS camera, when I'm saying it's taking one pixel at a time, is think about it as your TV screen and you see all the static going across. A TV screen is very much like our CV, our CMOS cameras and how they capture our images. Now a good CMOS camera, now we're probably talking let's say a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars, okay? A CCD camera, they can start at fifteen hundred to five thousand. Big difference, okay? And there's lots of different brands that do that. Now, common CMOS cameras are your Altair Astros, your ZWOs, your QHYs, ones that most of us are very familiar with. And your CCD cameras are like your SBIGs, your Attic, and your QSI cameras. And I know that's even more letters that I'm throwing at you, but I can't help those. Those are company names, okay? However, the CMOS cameras outweigh the added complexity of the individual pixels. CMOS sensors are faster than their CCD counterparts, which allow for higher video frame rates. CMOS imagers provide higher dynamic range and require less current and voltage to operate. So that's basically why most of us are using CMOS cameras. Overall, for astronomy, that is a great choice to go with, and it's more in the affordable range for us. All right, so. Another one of those acronyms we like to hear is what is your DEC and what is your RA? What does that mean? Well, your DEC and your RA together help you find one of those celestial bodies up in the sky. It's kind of like their street address when you put them together. But you've also got a DEC and RA when you're talking about your mount. Okay, the DEC is this top portion. I'm going to loosen this clutch. And you can see this is going to be our north and south adjustment of our telescope. And our RA is going to be this portion where I'm going to loosen the clutch and you're going to see I'm spinning this. This is my RA. RA stands for right ascension, which is our east and west. And DEC stands for declination, which is north and south. Put the two together, you have a street address for the stars. Then you have some people saying, well, how fast is your glass? Well. My glass is just sitting there. It's not zoom, zoom, it's not fast. Um, so what are they talking about when they say, how fast is your glass? Well, they want to know the f-stop of it. Okay, there's another word, f-stop. That's the aperture. That's how much light can it gather at a moment. So when you're dealing with a physical camera lens and you look down the tube of it and you adjust your aperture ring, you will see these little fan blades that come in together and they make things either really small or really big. So the larger the number, the smaller the hole is for the amount of light. Why is it a large number? Well, it's the, no it's the fan blades, the size of the fan blades is larger, which is shrinking down the area that you can get light through. Now, if you have a small number, it means these fan blades are actually much smaller inside the lens and you get more light coming through. More light equals fast. So the smaller the F number, the faster your glass is. So my Explorer Scientific uh, scope is an F7, so that's kind of a medium range and fast. But if somebody came back and said that they're using an F4 lens, that's pretty damn fast. If they're using F10, eh, not so fast. So that's kind of how it goes. The larger the number, the slower the glass. The smaller the number, the faster the glass. Hence, fast glass. Fast glass lets more light in.
All right, so does that clear that up just a little bit? Eh, just a little bit. Okay, so another acronym that people like to say is FOV. What is FOV? It stands for field of view. It's the amount of the sky that your telescope and camera combo can accomplish. Now, I use astronomytools.com, I think it is, or .net, the link will be below, and I calculate my image scale and all that using that, and it tells me what my field of view is. So I know if I'm looking up at the sky, am I looking at this really, really narrow field of view, or am I looking at a wide field of view? In general, look at the millimeters of your telescope, okay? If you have, let's say, a 102 millimeter, I'm going to say it's about this wide, okay? If you have a 50 millimeter telescope, it's going to be this wide. So the smaller the number, the wider the angle. It's much like camera lenses. I shoot landscape photography with an 11 millimeter lens, which means I get a very wide field of view. But if I want to photograph the birds back here on the bird feeders, I use a 400 millimeter camera lens, which gives me a very narrow field of view, but allows me to zoom in on my target. So the larger the millimeters, the smaller the field of view, the further off you can go. So if you're going after a galaxy, I'd look at like a 127 or larger telescope to get the galaxies that are super tiny and make them really big in your frame. But if you're going after Orion, which happens to be a very big nebula, you're gonna want something with a smaller millimeter. So the 102, I can get most of it, but not all of it. An 80 millimeter is a much better choice. And I've got one more great acronym for you. This is one I hear on the astro field a lot, okay? So you ready for it? It's called CRS, and it's something we all face every single day and even more so as we get older. CRS stands for can't remember, you know what the word is. So guys, that's what I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you like these type of videos, please consider subscribing down below. Like this video, give it a thumbs up, give it a high five, leave me comments down below, okay? Now, I am still working on this website. WordPress is literally kicking my you know what and i'm working on it. i'm really trying guys i didn't know how difficult this was going to be to change website platforms but i'm working on it and it will be up and running soon and when it is up and running we will have a giveaway for you guys a huge huge giveaway this is a huge giveaway this is a giveaway gift from the gods from altair astro land sea and sky and Deer Lake Astronomy Village. So guys, stay tuned. Hang with me. I'm working on it. I will get it out there for you. Who knew that creating a website would cause so much heartache and keeping you guys from signing up for this giveaway that I really, really want to give to you. Okay, so I am Amy Astro. I am wishing you guys some great health, clear skies, and I will see you all in the next video. Love all of y'all. Shorter, hold her close, farther to you.